Okay, guys, so we got part two of our Pi Station mod tutorial today. So to start, I'm just going to show a few things real quick, like I'm going to be removing the solder from our USB adapter. We want to make sure we remove the solder properly on this because we do not want to damage that little board. We need this bad boy to stay in good shape. So going through it, just removing one by one, ensuring that we get all the solder off and that the holes on the board are going all the way cleanly through so we can put our leads through there properly. And then when that's all done, our little adapter piece should easily just slide right off. Nice and clean. Everything's off of there. All our holes are accessible on the board for our connections to go through. He's gonna be, we're just gonna line them up from our control port that we put together. And I'm gonna go ahead and show a different way that I went about doing it this time. In the previous video, I just kinda removed the solder a little bit. But if you watch here, what I did with this one, and I found it was a lot easier and to get a cleaner connection and whatnot doing it this way. So I don't really care about the board. But as you see, I'm not trying to break it off of the board. I'm just bending it a little bit so I can get to those leads and I'm gonna snip them. I don't care about the board, so I mean, I'm not really trying to damage it, but I just wanna snip those leads to get the, the controller ports off of here fairly cleanly without having to desolder and go through all those connections. Since I'm not gonna be using all this stuff anyway. So we'll do that on both sides. Like I said, just bend it up a little bit because we don't, if you pull it up too much, you will mess up the pins that are in the controller port. We don't want to do that. We just want to clip them all off. So there we got everything off nice and clean. Now we're going to pull this little tape off of here. And this little back panel we want to get off of there. And those little metal tabs you see there, we're going to go ahead and clip those. Those little fellas are just for the memory card port. And since we don't need that, we don't care. Go ahead and cleanly clip them and then pry that little bad boy off. You just want to make sure you're not bending those pins. You want to keep them straight. So we're just going to try to pull that straight out, get all our pins out of there. You should have nine pins once you remove this piece from your controller port. And do not throw those guys away. We do need them. That piece, toss her in the trash. Forget about it. And then here I'm just cleaning up the memory card slot. Leads, just getting that nice and flush. So both of our pieces are looking good. Like I said, we should have nine of these pins. Do not lose them. You need them. The next part, you're going to want to make sure you have your wires ready, and I've already done this on these controller ports, but just as an example, you're going to take one end of your lead and solder them to these little pins. That's all you want to do. And then you're going to put them right back in there. And they all kind of press fit in. They have like these little wings on the side of the pins that make it where you cannot put them in any other way. So once I did that and I soldered the leads to the to the pins and slid them in. I put a little bit of hot glue on the back to keep them all in place and just keep everything, everything looking good. So now the next part, I'm gonna take our leads from our controller port and we wanna line them up to where it makes sense to the USB adapter. You don't wanna put it on backwards. So here I'm just, I'm making sure all the leads of the bare ends of the wire are kind of twisted so I can put them through the holes on the board and solder them in cleanly. So in the first spot here, I'm just going to go ahead and put her through, fold her over, and then solder that connection. Like I said, I'm no expert at soldering, but this is fairly easy to do. Once you solder that point, snip the, the lead off of the back so you don't have any extra hanging out. And on this particular board, it only uses eight of the connections. The second one you don't use. The previous one that I had had to have all nine of them. So it's just going to depend on what version you get. 
sometimes you'll buy them from the same seller and you might get this version you might get the other one they both look identical on the outside but the board could be different and you'll know um, because once you remove everything out of that adapter you're gonna see that the second the second hole on that board is not utilized so you just make sure you skip the second connection on your controller like I said solder them leads in clip the excess off the back and you should be good to go it doesn't take too long it doesn't take too long to do this just be patient make sure you're not getting those those connections the solder touching against each other just every spots clean and no excess of uh, solder going all over the place Boom, there we go, last one done. Clip that extra lead off, the second spot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda lay it in there, see how she fits. Now with the PS1, the little mini case here, your, your controller ports using the originals, they're gonna fit fairly easily back in there. You're just gonna wanna line them up with the screw holes. You're gonna have to make sure that they are perfectly aligned and both of them will kind of be at an angle But they can only really fit one way You know the little edge pieces on those adapters. There's holes in them That's where your screws go through when you screw the case back together So you need to make sure they are perfectly aligned But as you see here, it's not that hard to do to get them perfectly aligned on there And you know if you get a little excess of hot glue in one of those holes as long as it's still aligned or you know perfectly you can still get your screw back in there but just be careful with that now here I'm just kinda trying to lay this this bad boy out see where I'm gonna put the pie in this case it's my previous build I did it a little differently this one I'm trying to figure out where I'm gonna put it that's why I use these extensions like for the HDMI and then the power cord extension was really important because I didn't want to have the power cord permanently attached in there. I wanted to be able to unplug the system and remove it whenever I so chose or needed to. So once once I found a spot here, you know, getting her kind of planned out, you might be able to do it a little differently depending on how long your leads were for the controller adapters and all that stuff. But now we're gonna do like this little diagram says. We're attaching our power button. Just follow the directions in the previous screen. Freeze frame that bad boy if you gots to. But the power button goes in the third set of pins down from the top. And then our LED goes the positive right underneath the power button. And then on the last inside lead. Or GPIO pin for the last lead. And here I'm just kind of hot gluing the power button back back into this case there's a little square spot that kind of indicates that's where the power button goes so that's that's where we're gonna put her right back in there try to get her as flush and, and as cleanly in there as possible standing up straight could be a little tough you know using hot glue you might need it to, to set a little bit but you'll get her in there don't worry Now just kind of repositioning stuff, you know, this is kind of not exactly planned. I kind of knew what I wanted to do, but I'm just kind of checking it out. How am I going to do all this? Because I did, I do want to get that power port, the power adapter kind of glued on that edge there. So just kind of fidgeting this guy around, see where everything's going to lie. So as you see here, I did get my, my LED in there as per the previous diagram. And I did glue down my connection just to make it as flush as possible. And then with the LED light, what I am pointing out here is there's like a little circle underneath the power button. 
that kind of indicates where the LED goes. So you can definitely glue that guy down. Or if you just lay it there and it's not having any connections, like here, I, I need to put some electrical tape around the leads, but as long as you get it in that vicinity and not overlapping the screw hole, you'll be fine. And here I'm just showing this micro SD card extender that I think I might use for this build. At some other point, I might dremel out a slot for it just to make it so my micro SD card is accessible. But in this tutorial, I'm not doing that at the moment. Here I'm just showing that I did snip these connections and then I did kind of cut out a, a spot in the center in the CD tray. I do clean that up later with a with an edge because I just kind of snipped it all out and looked a little rugged, but I did clean it up later with just a blade. So now I'm just kind of lying everything back in here. It's pretty much good to go. Um, my micro SD card extender, I'm probably just going to lay in there for now so I have easy access, but at some point, like I said, I am going to dremel out a slot for that. Like I said, just kind of kind of lying her in there somewhere for now. Just for now. And essentially, this, this little fella is done. We're just going to have to test her out, but I'm going to go ahead get those screws back into each of these holes. You got six of them. Make sure you didn't lose those six screws. And then we're good to go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now that we got all that done, we have our finished product. So, here she is with our functioning LED power button using the original ports for the controllers. Everything working smoothly. Um, have my power adapter mounted in the back, just kind of hot glued it in. Definitely can go about that different if you so choose. But mostly I just wanted a case where the power button worked and I was using the original control ports. So I'm using these original PS1 dual shocks. Everything functions perfectly. I've already tested this out numerous times. You know, the hardest part's probably manipulating the control ports, but even that's not too difficult to do. Some little minor soldering action, that's about it. You know, you might want to cut out like I did the, uh, the CD tray a little bit so you have a little more room because packing stuff into this little fella is a little tight. It's a little hard because she is kind of small. Um, the original PS1 cases, definitely you got a lot more room. With these ones, you got, you know, you got to get creative with how you get everything in there. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it at least gave you some ideas if you wanted to do this. A little guidance, maybe. You don't necessarily have to follow it exactly. But, at least it gives you an idea. Different approach on how to do the controller ports, power button, all that kind of good stuff. So, with that said... Smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already, leave a comment, question, concern. If you need something, I'll get back to you, and I'll catch you guys next time. Boom!